Alvarez, though, Rene Alvarado, don't let that fool you. 32 and 10. He's been in there with some of the best in the division over the years. He's a warrior at the age of 32. Alvarado to be on the big stage, and this is a perfect opportunity for Lamont Roach to shine on the big stage. Lamont Roach Jr. in the black and white, Alvarado in the purple and gold. Roach Jr. told us he's got to start fast. As Chris mentioned, he started slow against Jamel Herring. But Alvarado kind of makes it difficult for him to start fast, does he not, Sergio? Yes, he does, because, yeah, well, first of all, he's strong, but he has long arms and he has this weird off timing uh, when he punches. And he brings that experience. Once he gets on the inside, those long arms dig down to the body. So, yeah, he can be difficult. Roach is going to be looking for a lot of counters in this fight. He says, watching tape on Alvarado, he sees a guy that leans forward. When he comes forward, he's going to be looking to hit him when he, hits, when he makes that move. Right hand just missing for Alvarado. Good body shot, though, by Alvarado on the inside. That's body work from Alvarado. Roach putting a little more steam on his punches early. Alvarado, plenty of pop. 21 KO wins in his 32 victories. Roach fighting real calm. This is what I've been seeing, the, the, how, how mature he's fighting. See how he barely tweaks his shoulder to miss that punch, but really calm. And maybe that's why he's been getting some knockouts in, in, in his last two fights, but very nice to look at with Roach. Well, in fairness, his last two wins came against very inferior opponents, so this, this is the perfect opponent to find out if that man strength we'll be talking about is real. No, I get it, but look at how calm he looks. Just how poised and calm he looks and looking for the right shots against a veteran and former champion Alvarado. He just looks real smooth in there. You know, everyone talks about finding your man strength. I'm 45. I still haven't found my man strength. <laughs> Alvarado's been in there with some big names, Yuri Gamboa, Jojo Diaz, to name a couple, of course, Concio. He's got the experience edge, but will that be enough to beat a 26-year-old who hasn't quite even reached his prime? See how calm he is right there, Lamont Roach. Alvarado missed like three or four punches right there, and it was just so smooth and calm, like Roach knows the punches are coming. That's experience, that's someone that's very comfortable as a professional now. Yeah, Roach Jr. was oozing confidence in our fighter meetings. Landed that shot. Oh, he rocked Alvarado with that hook. It wasn't even a, a hard hook. He just timed that really nicely, and that shook up Alvarado. Nice angles now for Roach Jr. And Roach looked beautiful in this round. Roach Jr. made his pro debut in April of 2014 as an 18-year-old while he was studying at the University of Maryland in mechanical engineering. He's put his degree on hold as he pursues a boxing world title. But he is a smart, intelligent young man. He has this quiet swag about him, quiet confidence. Did anyone ever say that about you, Sergio? Never. Coming up? Not quiet. <laughs> I was talking about the young, intelligent man. <laughs> Oh, nice right. Hey, wait a minute, nice right hand there from Alvarado. Good body shot yeah. by Alvarado. Does he need to bully this kid? I call him a kid, but he's six years younger than Alvarado. I think right now he's, he's boxing nicely. He, he's, uh, he's slowly putting pressure, he's cutting off the ring, but not doing it too aggressively where Roach can come off with the, the power counter shots. So right now Alvarado's doing the right thing. See, he's patiently cutting off the ring a little bit, and Roach staying calm, looking for the right counter shot. Now one thing about Rene Al Alvarado, he's always in shape. He's always in the right condition. So he's going to be able to keep up this pace through these 10 rounds. Good body shot there from Roach. But Alvarado answers back. Yeah, Alvarado tried to time him with that check hook right there. And there's his brother, Felix Alvarado, Sergio, who's looking on intently. And Gemelo, you know, both these guys, twins, won world championships. Both of them fight the same way. Volume punches like breaking down their opponents. Very fun to watch. I feel like Felix has got a little more flair. Well, why? The ponytail? The ponytail. Yeah, I knew you were thinking that. Business in the front, party in the back. <laughs> Roach just missing with that one-two combination. One of 
One of these guys is going to land a heavy punch here in a minute. I asked Rene Alvarado, has he ever fought a, fought a style similar to Lamont Roach? And he brought up Eric Hunter. And I watched that fight. Hunter, a, a, a cagey. Good work there for Roach. Cagey, smart fighter from Philadelphia. And I can see a lot of similarities here. But of course, Rene Alvarado lost that fight. And hopefully, he's taking that experience into this fight. Neither fighter really putting their stamp on this contest yet. I'm surprised that it's Alvarado who's the aggressor, Sergio. Absolutely not. I mean, that's his style. You know, he, even though he has long arms, he likes to get on the inside. He's a volume puncher, uh, aggressive, especially with the body shots. And when it comes to Lamont Roach, you know, he's a boxer puncher, turning into nice. a puncher. He is slipping and sticking right now. Speaking of last stands, it might be one for Yuneski Gonzalez. As for the here and now, Lamont Roach Jr. and Rene Alvarado. Could be Alvarado's last fight at this level. Alvarado coming out more aggressive with that double jab and long right hand. Every time he throws, I was going to say, every time he throws a power punch, when Roach is back against the ropes, he slips underneath it and spins out. You know, talking to Roach's team this week, the key they say to winning is going to be the output of Lamont Roach Jr. They know that Alvarado's going to come and throw a lot Ooh. of punches. Roach has got to be there countering with multiple shots. Left hook there from Roach. And it's going to take more than one shot to keep Alvarado off. Roach landed a nice left hook right there. He's landed some good check hooks, but it's going to take more than that. So hard for Alvarado to find the target. You know, you want to, whenever you start landing check hooks like that, you want to bring it back with the right hand, maybe double up on the left hook, body shots like he did right there. Throw punch, punches in combinations. See, Alvarado should be throwing right here, but he, you can tell that he's, 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 a little, he's a little timid because he knows that Roach's counter shots are that sharp, probably that strong. And Alvarado's swinging at a lot of air so far through three and a half or two and a half rounds. Yeah, whenever you swing and miss, you feel vulnerable. So I think that's what's going on with Rene Alvarado. That's why he's not land, letting his hands go. Usually he's a volume puncher coming forward. Yeah, and usually when you have your opponent against the ropes and you're a volume puncher, an aggressor like he is, that's when you throw your hands. But you can see here he's a little gun shy. Alvarado almost landing a big right hand right there. That's been the story so far, almost, for Alvarado. Alvarado does have that four-inch reach advantage. There's a jab. It's a good run by Alvarado. Good chopping right hand there by Alvarado. It's hard for Alvarado to sit down on his punches because when he puts a lot behind it, Sergio, Roach has time to get out of there. That's power boxing right there. That's pivoting, getting your shots out and pivoting away. Yeah, but this is a good round for Rene Alvarado. He is missing, but he's coming right back and throwing once again. He's landed, I think, more in this round than Lamont Roach. A little bit low there. Yeah, Roach, you can see on his face, felt that was low. No, I, I agree with Chris. I think Alvarado's having a good round. He's uh, putting steady pressure, landing some good right hands, going down to the body, but always in front of Lamont Roach. And is not beyond the pale, as no. they say? No, it is not. But this is what we want to see from Lamont Roach against a, a veteran like Alvarado. He's going to have all the tricks, so we're going to see how Roach handles all these tricks. Round four scheduled for 10. Lamont Roach beat Neil Tabano in October 2020 by knockout after three rounds and scored a second round KO against Daniel Rosas in July. So he's coming off back-to-back -back KO wins. Once one here tonight against Alvarado, but that is not going to be easy. As Alvarado may have been beaten 10 times, but only once has he been knocked out. And 
and that's very impressive considering you know how many champion champions he's faced. So you know, yeah, he has he has a lot of losses, but he only been stopped one time in a fight that he advanced. So very impressive uh, career and resume by Rene Alvarado. And you can see there punches landing in round three. That's the first time Alvaro, Alvarado has outlanded Roach Jr. 18 to 13. Yeah, Roach is looking for counter shots now. But Alvarado doing what he always does, you know, punching in, in bunches. Yeah, and you see the output for Alvarado there, nearly double the amount of punches thrown by Lamont Roach. Good chopping right hand there by Alvarado. Let's see if Roach decides to stay in the pocket a little bit more now. There's a nice right. Good left hook. And there you go. He's standing in the pocket, shifting and pivoting. Nice right there. Best punch of the fight. Ran it for Roach, but Alvarado right back. And you called it, Grisham. He's holding his own right here, just not backing off anymore. He wants respect. I think that's a good adjustment, too, because when he was backing up, he was countering occasionally, but you saw Alvarado landing more punches, standing in the pocket, trading. If he can take Alvarado's power, that's probably the best way to go. Oh, I love the way he's shifting right now, shoulder rolling, coming up with the right uppercuts and right hooks. But that's Alvarado's wheelhouse. You want to stand in the middle and trade with him? He's more than happy to do so. And that's why this fight can turn into fireworks really quick. I guarantee you, growing up on the streets of Nicaragua, he did not <laughs> prance around in fights. He would stand right there and go toe to toe. That's how he became known as a warrior in his neighborhood. Eventually, went to the gym and became a world champion. And look at his body at the age of 32. Doesn't appear to have an ounce of fat on it. No, especially how many wars that 32-year-old body has. I and mean, he's very experienced. Swing and a miss there as Roach. Nice slick move to get out of the corner. Ah! Was he landing punches, but everything Rene Alvarado threw was missing. Well, Chris, how do you have it through four, four, four full rounds? I've got it even, two rounds to two. I thought Rene Alvarado took rounds two and three. Clear win in round four for Lamont Roach. Uh, and again, I love the adjustment he made in that last round to move a little bit less and stand like this in the pocket and trade a little bit more. Each getting shots in there. This is the fight Rene Alvarado wants. And this is a fight that can turn into fireworks, what I can expect with their, both, their style match. Good body shots landed by both right now. They're really digging into the body. Some swelling under the eyes now of Roach Jr which shows that Alvarado is scoring to the head. Look how calm Roach is right there on the inside, just barely making Alvarado miss. I would love to see him go down to the body, counter to the body, make him miss, and check him downstairs. Yeah, his last two knockouts have come. Oh, big overhead right there for Alvarado. But it appears more and more that Roach Jr. is going to say, look, let's, let's slug this out. There's a left hook by him. Action picking up here at the midway point. Really good round for both fighters. Both landed some big shots. Alvarado, I think, landed a, a, the cleaner, bigger shot with that right hand. Alvarado, so much experience in there. Been in there with top talent. And outside of Jamel Herring, Roach Jr. hasn't been in there with nearly the level that Alvarado has. And this is why it's such an important test right here. They exchange power punches. You know, he, he's been on the championship level. Lamont Roach has came up short with Herring, but if he can if he can beat oh, a former right champion. Hand. Big right hand, it snapped the jaw of Alvarado. Can he follow up on it, though? If he can beat and especially stop a former champion that's only been stopped one time, that's a big statement by Lamont Roach. Good Chopping right, right hand. Yeah, from Alvarado. Yeah, but you know, Alvarado's thinking stoppage, too. He's landed some power punches to Roach Jr. Yeah, Alvarado's fighting like it's, it's make or break for him. If he, he was considering retirement, he's fighting like it's like it. Last chance. Well, sometimes you choose retirement, and other times retirement chooses you. Absolutely. 
So it's not to say if he loses this fight, he's done, but he's probably done on a main card on the zone, oh. and he knows that. Round six, schedule for 10. Fight starting to heat up a little bit. It's been very close. Chris, what would your, or excuse me, Sergio, what would your advice be right now to Lamont Roach Jr.? Keep doing what he's doing, but uh, dig down to the body a little bit more. I don't think Alvarado liked those body shots, and those are setting up the, the left hooks upstairs as well. Yeah, I like the idea of Lamont Roach fighting in the center of the ring here. It seems like every time he gets on his bike, he's able to land some shots periodically, but it's when Alvarado is having the most success. But I like the way Roach is fighting. I mean, he, he's being aggressive. He's boxing nicely. He's very poised in there. You finding these rounds hard to score, Chris? Very Several of them, three. yes. Me too, yeah. I would favor, I would lean him towards Roach because he's doing a, a, a couple of things more nicely in there, but Alvarado lands some chopping punches that are sneaky power in there. I would agree, but you never know with judges. Some judges, they see output and they swing some rounds that way because one fighter is throwing the higher volume of punches. Oh, nice right hand there by Roach. Good counter punch as Alvarado landed a few first. See right there, that's what they want from Roach. Three and four punches and dip down because you know something's going to come back. Punch and dip. Punches thrown through round five. You can see how close it is. Alvarado would land at 70. Ooh. Chopping left there for Roach. Alvarado answering back, but Roach has put more steam behind his shots. Yeah, oh, yeah. This is where Roach is doing his best work. On the inside, because Alvarado can't compete with the speed of Roach and the defense, shifting the shoulders like he is right there. That's sometimes what those stats don't show you. Yeah, they both landed a similar amount of power punches, but it's Roach Jr., at least in this round, who's hitting harder. Alvarado much more apprehensive to throw punches now when he's got Roach backed against the ropes. Big straight right hand, but Alvarado shakes it off. But this was a very good round for Lamont Roach Jr. Ah! Collected, landing, and checking with those counters. Schedule for Tim, we're in round seven right now. It's been a competitive fight for sure. We'll look at Chris's scorecard in just a minute. Coach Jr. told us yesterday, he said, look, I just want to win this fight, but I know how important a knockout would be to send some waves through the boxing media to say, take a look at me. I just knocked out Rene Alvarado. Yeah, no, I asked him, what does he expect? I said, no, nope, I'm gonna be on point. He's definitely on point. Let's see Chris Mannix's scorecard through six full rounds. Yeah, 58-56 in favor of Lamont Roach. I feel like over these last three rounds, he started to assert himself, landing the cleaner punches, and standing in the pocket and trading is working for him, at least as far as scoring rounds go. And for the record, Lamont Roach Jr. has never had a knockout after the sixth round. But he did have Jamel Herring in big trouble in the 11th of their title fight. And Lamont Roach believes a win here will get him back into the world title picture. The title that he's targeting right now is the one that currently belongs to Roger Gutierrez. He has two now wins over Rene Alvarado. Gutierrez is expected to face Chris Colbert in the first quarter of next year. Lamont Roach wants the winner of that fight. Good crowd here tonight, but they really haven't had anything to get them excited. Never had that real big fired up moment or the big heavy shot or the knockdown. 
sitting on their hands, as we said. Nice check hook yeah. right there. There's a left. And that's what Rocha has been doing well. He's been very patient. He he, he throws one the one two out, then he cleans it up with a nice check hook. Ooh. Dorado cleaning up with his own left hook right there. Roach took that well. And Sergio, very slowly, Lamont Roach has started to be oh. more of the aggressor. He's the one walking down Rene Alvarado ever so slowly. And giving an opportunity for Alvarado to land something big as well. You feel like Roach Jr. is trying to send a message in this round. Absolutely. But Alvarado says message received and returned to sender. That was Presley's song. Sounded like a movie. Ten seconds to go here in the seventh, a pivotal round. A little bit more physical for Lamont Roach. All right, so what does Alvarado need to do here if he's behind, as Chris Mannix seems to believe he is? I think he's just doing it right now. Double and tripling up on the Jazz back up, Roach, and bang away at the body. You already bloodied the nose of Roach. Keep, keep it bloody. <laughs> keep the blood flowing. Keep the blood flowing. Make it uncomfortable for Roach. Just like that. Double, tripling up on the Jazz. Keep Roach's hands by his chin. Roach Jr. said he wasn't aggressive enough early on against Jamel Herring. You think he's going to look back on this fight, Chris, and say, you know, I wish I'd done a little more? No, I think he was pretty active in those early rounds, certainly more active than we saw him against Jamel Herring. And we've seen Roach throughout his career have the kind of power that you know, holds up in the later rounds. In the 11th round, when he buckled Jamel Herring, giving him one of those shots that reminded you of Canelo Austin Trout in their fight, just shaking the legs, and he probably would have been able to pick up at least a knockdown if he had, been, had a few more, a little more seconds in that fight. I've got, to, I've got to say, good job by Alvarado to not get frustrated with all the swings and misses he's had. Sergio, you made a career out of making guys miss. You can no, see how frustration becomes a part of it. It can be a big frustration, and it, you know, Alvarado's doing a good job in this round. I mean, he's, he's pressuring back, he's missing, but he's, he's not getting... He's still, he's still throwing punches, even though he's missing. And it's Alvarado who's backed against the ropes for the first time. Or so you know, it seems that way. You know, you get discouraged when you miss, because fighters don't train to miss in the gym. So when it happens in, under the lights like that, you get discouraged, but keep, keep plugging away if you're Alvarado. Now, Lamont Roach and his team, they're looking for that one buckling shot. Ooh, a little bit below the belt now. Okay, let's go. Blood continuing to pour out of the nostrils of Lamont Roach Jr. They're looking for that one buckling shot because they believe a stoppage won't come with one punch, but they do believe if they can hurt Alvarado, they'll swarm him and get the referee to step in. And that one seemed to knock Alvarado off balance a little bit, but quickly he's on the front foot again. Nice jab. Alvarado come with the right hand as well. Good check hooks off the ropes for Roach. Another close round between Lamont Roach Jr. and Rene Alvarado. Hook from Roach. Roach has done a pretty nice job finishing rounds in this fight. Roach throws some big wide shots here at the end of the round. Who would you rather be right now, Sergio? Uh, Lamont Roach, but not by a lot. Alvarado's had his successes. Um, you know, there's a lot of confidence on, on both corners, but I think the confidence is swaying a little bit more in Alvarado's. I think if you're either fighter, you got to have the mentality, I have to win these two rounds. Yeah, if you're Lamont Roach, you know you're landing the cleaner punches. You know you're the more accurate puncher. But in the back of your mind, you've got to be a little bit concerned about the punch output of Rene Alvarado and the impact that might have on the judges. Let's see your scorecard here, Chris, with just two rounds left. Yeah, I'm comfortable giving Lamont Roach a comfortable lead at this point in this fight. He has been the more precise puncher, and he has landed some heavy, heavy shots. But as you see with Rene Alvarado, he just doesn't stop coming, flipping that jab out and looking for combinations. Oh, big. He's sitting down to the punches now as Roach. 
Coming from wide angles, too. Forget about straight punches. Roach loaded up on two big right hands. Alvarado took both those shots, didn't even flinch. No buckle or nothing. Yeah, Roach may forget, want to forget about the KO right now. I don't know if it's coming. But we're getting to the point that Alvarado might need one. Came up short with that overhand right right there, Alvarado. Yeah. I'd like, like to see how Lamont Roach takes a big punch from Alvarado, especially two consecutive right hands. Taking the punch. Oh, and he caught him. Gosh. Roach hit him with his best punch, and Alvarado's still there in the pocket. And, and this is what Alvarado does. Takes your best and keeps coming. Volume puncher. And finally, you can hear this crowd starting to get into it. Man, that was a big left hook by Lamont Roach. It was right on the chin. Alvarado didn't even flinch. And what does that do to your psyche if you're Lamont Roach Jr.? Chopping right hand there by Alvarado. Well, you realize that that punch is not going to be enough. You got to start <laughs> doubling and tripling up the combinations, which is what they want from his corner. You're thinking, I got to put some brass knuckles on. No, 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 no. I got it. Let's go. Huge bomb from Roach Jr., but Alvarado ate it. So it appears that Alvarado's going to need a big finish here. <laughs> but we saw in that last fight, you never know what these judges in Texas are thinking. Sergio, you've had some fun fights in Texas with the judges, haven't you? Yes, I have. And uh, anyone that's ever fought in Texas like in, uh, against a Texan knows exactly how that feels. Well, Lamont Rose Jr. is from D.C. and Alvarado is from Nicaragua. Good exchange right there. Both landing some good shots. Missing some big shots as well. Wow. Alvarado's corner say don't hold anything back. I think he's really got to sell out in this round, try to do something big. He's going to have a chance to win this fight. All right, Alvarado probably thinking in the back of his head, I've got to knock this guy down. What's the punch that's most likely to do it? I think punching in between the shots of Lamont Rhodes, because Rhodes is looking to counter nicely. So if Alvarado can actually check Ooh. in between shots like that, that's his best chance. Alvarado with an overhand right. Roach wants a knockout. Alvarado probably needs a knockout. I think Roach should have softened up the body a little bit more early. He landed some good clean single shots to the body, but if he could have done it doubling and tripling up on the body shots from both sides, he would have softened up the tough guy. Triple jab from Alvarado. Two evenly matched fighters. You probably think, though, if Alvarado was 26 as well, he might win this fight. Alvarado Six years going to mean a, a lot of difference here. And Alvarado countering nicely in there on the inside. Taking a page from Lamont Roach's book, shifting and shifting away and, and countering back with, with counter punches. Left hook right on the button for Roach. Look at that wide stance for Alvarado. Want to sit down and catch him coming in. Just over a minute to go here in the 10th and final round. This could be the last time we see Rene Alvarado, unless something dramatic happens here in the 10th. Swinging and missing is Roach. Body shot right there by Alvarado. Chris, do you think Rene could get a judge or two to say he won this fight? Is I've it seen, that close? I've seen crazier things happen when you have a fighter that throws as many punches as Rene Alvarado. If you're scoring this fight on accuracy, clearly Lamont Roach is the more accurate puncher. And now we got blood coming out of the nose of Rene Alvarado. Ten seconds left.
was a quality championship type performance by both fighters, a former champion in Rene Alvarado and a future champion in Lamont Roach. Pierre Alvarez scores his bout 100 to 90. Judges Wilfredo Esperon and Judge Ursulo Perez have the bout 98 to 92 to the winner by unanimous decision. And now proud the new WBA NABA Super Featherweight Champion. The pride of Maryland, USA, the Reaper, Lamar Roach Jr. Yeah, I think the judges got it right. Uh, some <laughs>